Hey guys, and welcome to the Leftover Culture Review. Today, I want to do something a little bit special. I wanted to talk about the Atari Jaguar. The title probably says something like the five best games for the Atari Jaguar, but the truth is I think it's a lot more interesting to talk about not what the five best games for the Atari Jaguar are, but if I could only keep five games, what would those five games be? I say that because there's a lot of titles out there on any platform, on any system that are easy to emulate. They might only be fun if you're gaming alone versus if you had friends over. Uh, there's going to be a lot of choices of mine that a lot of people aren't going to agree with. I've got, I'm pretty easy to impress, let's be totally honest, and I've defended the Atari Jaguar before, I've been called delusional, I've been called stupid, I've been called an ignoramus because I haven't been calling it a Jaguar, uh, here in Australia it's called the Atari Jaguar, same as the UK, and this is a UK console, well mine shipped from the UK, um, <clears throat> though the fact that it is a US console, maybe I should pay it the respect of calling it a Jaguar, either way, uh, I wanted to talk about the five games that I would keep uh, if I could only keep five Jaguar titles. As you can see, I've got 12, and I want to start off with the latest game that I got, which is Tempest 2000. Tempest 2000 is a, it's a really popular game for the Atari Jaguar. A lot of people will say that this is their favorite. Uh, it's got a great two-player mode. There's a few different ways to play the game. Um, once you get in there, there's like the classic version, there's the updated version, and yeah, obviously there's two-player competitive or co-op. So it's a great game for the Atari Jaguar. It's a lot of fun. It's easy to pick up and play. It's very addictive. You've got to keep going back. The uh, the biggest issue that it is that you can play it pretty much anywhere. There's a Jaguar emulator called PT Tempest. Or there's an Atari Jaguar emulator actually named after this game. And you can play this game on it uh, perfectly. Uh, there's no problems playing Tempest through an emulator. It works really great. There's also uh, Tempest 2000 on the Sega Saturn. Uh, that was a thing. As well as, look right here on my Android tablet. Let me get out of Final Fantasy. Tactics Advance, one of my favorite games. But um, Cyclone 2000 is a Android version of Tempest 2000, uh, complete with pumping music and some really like you can use the analog controls on the JXD tablet or whatever Android device you've got but it's a great port of Tempest 2000 so great game it's not gonna make the list uh, first example uh, let's get this one out of here the one game that I bought when I bought my Jaguar, I bought it to play this game. Uh, there's some really great first person shooters on the Atari Jaguar. I've also reviewed Wolfenstein 3D on this channel. As um, And if you did have a Jaguar, there's also like Doom. Doom is on this uh, console as well. Alien vs Predator. It's not the most sophisticated first person shooter. It's not Doom levels of quality here, but this is the only exclusive Atari Jaguar first person shooter available. There's three different campaigns here, right? You've got your colonial marines, you've got the aliens, and you've got the predators. And it's, uh, you, you fight your way through the ship. Each of the different races have their own, you know, weapons, have their own um, abilities. They've got their own rules governing how you play with them, as well as their own scenarios, obviously. Uh, the aliens have to go protect the queen, the predators have to go kill the queen, and the... The Colonial Marines, are, they have to blow up the ship, I think, to destroy both the species. So, for the Atari Jaguar, it's a really good game. And the emulators that I've played it on don't handle transparency all that well, and there's also a few other lingering issues. So I would say this game is, still, if you wanted to have the best version of it possible, you'd have to get the Atari Jaguar with the console. Uh, it's one player only, but it's a great game and I've done a full review of it, then I was very proud of how that review came out because I did have so much fun putting it together. Uh, that's something that comes a lot with these Atari Jaguar reviews is that I do have a lot of fun putting them together. I do really enjoy the Atari Jaguar system. Uh, it gets, it cops a lot of flack for not being great, but the truth is that a lot of the games available on it are exclusive to that platform. And uh, they're 3D games, they don't work via emulator, there's not much demand for them. I could also say the same about the Sega Saturn games in my collection. I really do enjoy playing the Sega Saturn as well, and there are some really awesome games, probably obviously a lot more than the Atari Jaguar, but there's something special 
about booting these cartridges up and using this system that not many people have heard of. So it, it's a really fun experience. Even if the games aren't blockbuster quality, going to hook you in for hours and hours and hours, it's still a really fun system to own, to collect for, to talk about, especially to talk about. And I'm really glad that I got some of these games before the prices went skyrocketing. So, um, so yeah, first game that I'd have to keep is Alien vs Predator. Uh, awesome game. So, moving on, uh, obviously Alien vs Predator is one player only. Going back to my collection, I really want to pull out something like... There's not that many fighting games for the Atari Jaguar and they're a great way to have a two-player game on the system. There's not that many. So if we look at what I've got here... Ultra Vortex is a Jaguar exclusive. This one you can play via emulator. It's a bit of a, a, a knockoff of like Mortal Kombat, but it is a really good original fighter for the Atari Jaguar. It's well worth checking out, but again, you can check this out via emulator. Uh, I'd still prefer playing it via a Jaguar, but it's totally an option. So great game worth checking out. Dragon, the Bruce Lee story. Um, again, this game is pretty much everywhere. Uh, so many different ways to play as the same character, right? You can only play as Bruce Lee. You can fight against a friend who also has to be Bruce Lee, or you can team up as two Bruce Lees and take on the story campaign. This game can be found in a few different places. It's not exclusive to the Jaguar, but the Jaguar version does have some pretty good graphics. So in saying that, uh, play it via your emulator. And again, with Kasumi Ninja. So this one is a Jaguar exclusive. Kasumi Ninja, mine actually came with a headband, which is totally worth owning just on its own. So Kasumi Ninja is an awesome game. Again, a little bit like Mortal Kombat. There's some really silly moves and some really sort of uh, gruesome fatalities and stuff like that. It's a lot of fun to check out, but I... It's gonna be a toss up between Kasumi Ninja and Fight for Life. I'd pick Fight for Life just because it's the only 3D fighter on the Jaguar. It really shows off what the system can do. And even though the game isn't, the game isn't great. Let's, let's be totally honest. It's a fighting game that's really slow. It's punch by punch. I've done a full review on it and the review was fun to do, but again, it's, it's really hard to recommend Fight for Life for the gameplay. But the fact that it's a 3D fighter on the Atari Jaguar, it's the last game that Atari ever released for the system. It's the Swan Song, you know? Um, it looks a lot like Virtua Fighter. It plays a lot slower, but the fact that you've got these characters, they've got their moves, it's, it's a complete game. It's not a great game, but I'd, I'd go for this one if I had to sell off all my fighting games. I'd probably hold on to Fight for Life just because it's so unique. Uh, you're not going to be able to get this game via emulator. It's very heavily 3D. I had a lot more fun here than I did in Kasumi Ninja. So take that as you will, but you know, two player games. They're a rarity on the Atari Jaguar and they're well worth picking up if you can, if you can snag a two player game, go for it. And talking about two player games, um, I also wanted to talk about Raiden. So Raiden is the arcade port. Obviously it's not an Atari Jaguar exclusive. I'm not going to be holding on to this one if I could only hold on to five. But in saying that, it is a really awesome port that is for the Atari Jaguar. It's also two players and it's one of the only plain, you know, sci-fi horizontal vertical shoot 'em ups available for the system. Cybermorph. Cybermorph is a Jaguar exclusive. It's only one player. You can't play it via emulator. It doesn't make the list because it's not... It's not a fantastic game, but it's still fun enough to play and there's a lot to see here. So don't discount Cybermorph if you can get it cheap enough, but it doesn't make the list right now. What I did want to draw your attention to is a game called Brutal Sports Football. Now this one, I believe it works via emulator, but it is such a fun two-player game. Uh, you can get weapons, you get um, different sort of power-ups, there's different sort of teams like the Rhino people and the Lizard people and the Vikings, so you're pitching these different teams together on this field, you're trying to decapitate each other, knock each other over and get the ball through the hoop. It's a very competitive game and I had a lot of fun playing it, even in single player mode it's a blast, but if you can get a friend in to play with you, um, it's a great two player game, one of my favourites on the Atari Jaguar and one that I wouldn't hesitate busting out for pretty much anybody who comes through. I do enjoy sports games uh, for the gameplay aspect, but this one not really being tied to any specific sport 
was a lot of fun to pull out with even people who don't particularly enjoy sporting games. There's still a very competitive feeling about it. Uh, really fun game, well worth checking out. So uh, this one definitely makes my personal list. I, uh, what more can I say? Uh, except maybe the box art. The box art is the worst thing about this game, but it's really hard not to laugh. So just to break it down quickly, we've got Alien vs Predator, a first person shoot 'em up. We have got Fight for Life, the 3D fighting game, um, two players. We've got Brutal Sports Football, another two player game. And look, I'm gonna keep it coming because I really enjoy two player games. That's why I've got a games room in the first place. It's so I can invite people in and play some really awesome games with them. So in saying that, it's not gonna be a popular choice, but going back to the sports games, White Men Can't Jump. I did a full review on this game and I talked a lot about why I enjoyed playing it. It's not a great game, but again, it's an exclusive to the Atari Jaguar. You can't play it via emulator. And there's just so much 90s awesome extremeness. Uh, bundled up in this little package. It's got nothing to do with the movie, but it was really fun to, to plug it in and play around or two. And I think that's what keeps me coming back to the Jaguar is these, they're, they're games that you're not going to spend hours and hours playing, but they're fun to plug in and get through a, a round or two or face off against a friend. The tournament mode only took about an hour if you really wanted to, hour and a half maybe, if you really wanted to get in and, and play through the tournament. So there's not much here. It's not a great game, but I did have a lot of fun playing it, I had fun doing it for the review, and it's a game that I do boot up when people come over. If they're interested in seeing what the Jaguar can do, Brutal Sports Football, like I mentioned, is, is my favorite sports game for the system, but this kind of shows off more of the uh, graphics people are expecting. Brutal Sports Football is a great looking two player, a 2D game, whereas White Men Can't Jump is in 3D with like 2D sprites, so it's an interesting game at that. And look, rounding it down, in my collection personally, I've also got Trevor McFur in the Crescent Galaxy. Now this was, along with Cybermorph and Raiden, one of the only games available for the Jaguar at launch. It copped a lot of, uh... <laughs> it copped a lot of flack. It was in the firing line for the Atari Jaguar. You saw these awesome ads, you saw like, this system's gonna blow the Super Nintendo and the Mega Drive out of the water and then they point at Trevor McFerr and say this is the next generation of gaming. Uh, I had a lot of fun reviewing the game again and you know I, I do have a lot of fun reviewing Atari Jaguar games. It was just so bizarre. It looked like a college kids dorm room experiment gone mad. There's you know cherubs holding I think like crossbows and machine guns and sunnies. There's uh, strange and wonderful and weird bosses that look like cooking utensils all mashed together. Uh, I did a review for Trevor McFur, so check it out if you haven't already. It's a... Uh, I had a lot more fun putting the review together than I did playing the game, but Trevor McFur itself actually works quite well via emulator. It's one player only. It's a vertical... No, it's a horizontal shoot 'em up And there's not that much... Like, it's fun enough. It, it's kind of unique to the Jaguar system, but it's not something that I'd really recommend for a first timer. It's not a game that I'd hold on to if I could only hold on to five. The final game rounding out my list for the top five Jaguar games that I would hold on to if I had to sell off my collection uh, is Iron Soldier. Iron Soldier is a 3D, I'd, I'd call it like a tank sort of simulator, like you control a giant robot going through the city. You've got different missions, you've got different weapons, you are uh, set up different, um, like you can configure your robot how you want to to take on the next mission. You do fight other Iron Soldier robots, you have to explode buildings to get power-ups. Uh, it's. It was actually quite surprising to me going through the game, just realizing how varied and how many different mission types there are to play here. So. Iron Soldier, not available through emulator, not available anywhere else. If you did want to check out Iron Soldier 3, there was a PlayStation 1 game. So Iron Soldier 3 was ported to the PlayStation 1, didn't actually come out on the Jaguar. So kind of worth checking that out if you're curious about the line. But the Atari Jaguar game, where it all started, this is a, a really solid game for the Atari Jaguar. It shows off those 3D shapes, even if, though there's no texture mapping. It shows off the 3D of the Atari Jaguar. <clears throat> um, there's other really strong 3D games in the library like uh, Skyhammer would be a really good example of like a, a beautiful looking 3D game that I had a lot of fun playing, but I couldn't justify holding on to that game. And, and you know, I haven't. I've sold a lot of Jaguar games just to keep the collection moving. Um, 
I ended up selling Skyhammer, I've sold Wolfenstein 3D, and I've sold a couple of others in my time, Bubsy. Um, I had Cyber, not Cyber Morph, the racing one. <laughs> Checkered Flag. I also had Checkered Flag at one point. All these games were interesting to play and to check out and to find out the history about, and um, obviously I've done a review on Cyber, Skyhammer. I've done a review on Skyhammer, and that was a really... It was a really interesting game how they um, found the code and they fixed it up and they released it. It was from Rebellion, so the guys who did the Alien vs Predator game. Skyhammer was a really powerful 3D game for the system. There were cheat codes in different districts to fly through, but I just found I wasn't playing it as much. When you've got games like the ones that I've mentioned here, a lot of the time they're easy to jump in and play a round or two. With Iron Soldier, if you've got all the missions available, you can just pick a mission and pick what you want to do and play that round and, and log off. So for me, the Atari Jaguar was at its strongest, or still is at its strongest for me, when I can get in there quickly for a quick game or two. It's not a system that's going to hold my attention for hours upon hours. That's not particularly like a realistic expectation. So look, I have sold the Jaguar games, I've sold plenty of them. This, I've done a lot of research into the system and I've had a lot of games and I've had the opportunity to buy a lot of games. This five shortlist is out of the entire system's library, um, what I would hold on to if I have to sell everything else except five games. Um, I've got my reasons for that, I'd love to hear what your reasons are. Uh, call me out for being an idiot or totally agree with me because I, I, I do like hearing what other people are playing on the Jaguar and what other games I find interesting. Anyway, like I mentioned, I've got a whole bunch of Atari Jaguar reviews. I would love it if you wanted to check them out. Thank you so much for watching and tune in next time for more leftover culture. Cheers, guys.